oxalates are absorbed um, when they're in the body, they can bind with other. Um, and I would recommend as pretty much with any lab that you always get Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I'm joined again today by the beautiful Lindsay Zerker from the Kidney Nutritional Institute. So, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me again. I really always appreciate you being on here and your wisdom and your time. So thank you. Thanks for having me back. Happy to be here. So oxalates, let's just dive straight in. So what are oxalates and why should people with kidney disease even know what this word means? Yes. So oxalates, is, they are a substance that are found in plants and in plants, they serve a really uh, helpful purpose. They help regulate minerals and help protect against external um, uh, issues that uh, could harm the plant. And, um, but for humans, it's considered a non-nutrient. Uh, we don't need oxalates um, and they just happen to be in a lot of plant foods that we eat. And so, um, for kidney disease, we like to pay attention to them because um, certain conditions can arise that can make people um, higher risk for absorbing more oxalates, and that can increase your risk of kidney stones. And then we've also found that for people who have PKD, that um, reducing um, oxalate intake may help to reduce the risk of cyst growth, but also we've noticed a lot of different type of symptom improvement like flank pain and and joint pain and things like that. So how would you know if you've got an oxalate issue? What are the sort of things if I'm thinking, okay, right, I've got, maybe I've got some PKD, are oxalates an issue for me? How would I know? So um, it is always a good idea to talk with your healthcare provider and ask them about it. Um, but for PKD, there's definitely some good research um, showing that, um, an oxalate managed diet um, can help reduce the risk of cyst growth because when um, oxalates are absorbed, um, when they're in the body, they can bind with other minerals and they can form crystals. And mm. if this happens in the kidney, this can form kidney stones that normally the tubules, um, they will, the tubules in your kidneys will have to expand to let those kidney stones through. And for people with PKD, they found that um, these tubules expanding activates a, a process um, that uh, leads to continuous tubule dilation. It uh, increases that risk of cyst growth. Um, and so for PKD, you may not exactly have symptoms. It's just something that's coming up in the literature is a, is a strong correlation. But some people have found that um, if they... Um, have a more oxalate managed diet. They don't have as much flank pain. They don't have as much joint pain. They overall feel better because those oxalates just seem to be wreaking some havoc in their system. Other people might think they might need to manage their oxalates if they have had previous kidney stones that were calcium oxalate kidney stones. And then, um, or you know, potentially if you have a family history of kidney stones and you have other risk factors for developing kidney stones, it might be worth something considering. And then if you just, um, if you have some gut issues, like if you've had your gallbladder taken out, if you've had, you know, GI surgery, um, or if you notice that maybe you have kind of funky looking stools, it's something good to talk with your doctor about and say, hey, is this like, am I digesting my foods really well? Is there a problem here? Um, those kind of things would be things that would make you think maybe you should consider uh, looking at an oxalate managed diet. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if someone says, well, I think I've got some of those symptoms, but I'm not 100% sure. Are there tests that people can do to actually determine whether oxalates are an issue for them? Yes, you can do blood and urine tests for um, oxalates. Um, and I would recommend as pretty much with any lab that you always get more than one test done because we know there's a lot of things that can influence um, hydration, especially for urine tests is a really big one. And a lot of times people go like first thing in the morning and then you're kind of dehydrated. So you want to um, maybe get two or three of those tests done and kind of see if there's any kind of trend or if it's really stable or if it's really all over the place um, and look at it in a proper context so that um, 
you don't get this one lab done and then you find out later oh I was actually really dehydrated that day and we freaked out for no reason <laughs> yeah I'm fine with oxalates <laughs> yeah so but it is really nice to get a baseline um so that uh, you can see if your interventions are enough because like I mentioned you can do uh, lower oxalate diet but there's other things you can do too to help reduce your absorption of oxalates so um, but yeah blood or urine tests can work really well if you want to know more about what we do head to www.kidneycoach.com and if you want to be informed every time we put out a video make sure you hit subscribe and if you have any comments or you'd like Lindsay or me to interview anyone on any specific areas make sure so you leave some comments below and I will get back to you and Lindsay, thanks again. Always appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll get you back on again. I think we need to, there's a few more things I want to pick your brains about. So we'll have to do that. <laughs> thanks so much for having me, Fiona. It's always great to chat with you. Yeah, you too. All right. You enjoy the rest of your evening. And again, thanks for being part of our community. We will see you next time. Bye.